Hey, gang. I have a stray hour here. So, I thought I would do the responsible thing and do some farming chores. Trying to set up my chat. A mysterious figure came into my room and then left. Very exciting. Interesting. I have to say, the hurdles to getting on Twitch were pretty low. It was not overly complicated to set myself up to go live. If there's a hurdle, it's figuring out everything else besides going live. That's okay. Nobody said that we had to do this perfectly. In fact, as I've said before, I like to think that the spirit of Stardew Valley Let's see here. That one's not real. The spirit of Stardew Valley is to get yourself in the headspace where you don't particularly feel like you have to do anything perfectly. I think that's part of the therapeutic nature of this game. It's interesting, though. Stardew Valley, in many ways, seems like a very simple game. Um, oh, it's my friend Clint. Hi, Clint. Oh, yes, this is the interaction I had uh, before. Oh, hi, I see somebody in chat. Hello. You can call me Jared. Or crypto. People do. Oh, Clint. Thank you for your mysterious visit. And your blueprints. Hello, Jared. I've been watching you. Here, have these blueprints. They will work well with the things I've seen you doing. Thank you, Clint. This is actually very kind of you. I don't mean to suggest that you are in any way creepy. You are a delight. And I'm happy to share this community with you. Bye, Clint. See you soon. Willie, eh? It is interesting that I quickly become sort of a central figure in this town I just arrived in. Although, again, there are like, what, 20 people here? Hi, DM Static. It's nice to meet you, too. In case any of you... uh have uh, no knowledge of the other things I do, but happened upon this stream. Uh, I'd say I'm mainly known. I'm not known. But if you know me, you probably know me from my podcast, The Crypto Naturalist, which is a... <laughs> I like to say usually that it's sort of a nature documentary, except all of the nature is made up. Cryptids like uh, Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, except I really never talk about cryptids you've heard of. Because I'm always making up new ones. 
I'm also a poet. Just had a new poetry collection released called Field Guide to the Haunted Forest. And for a long time, I've enjoyed watching other people play video games. So, I thought, you know, maybe I'm going to give that a try. <laughs> yeah. The beard lures people in. No, you're right. It's a badge of trustworthiness. <laughs> I enjoy this aspect of early Stardew Valley right here, going around and cleaning up my farm. Uh, in real life, I, I enjoy mowing. Well, I don't sort of enjoy the environmental realities of mowing. I like to say that it's like farming nothing. But I do enjoy the activity of it. There's something sort of zen about it. It's also work, which, you know, often the kind of work I do typically don't, don't have this characteristic. But mowing is the kind of work where you do it. It's a bit dramatic. You can see what you've done. And it's unambiguously... <laughs> You've accomplished what you set out to do. So I, all of my jobs, many of my jobs have been sort of uh, creative um, and academic stuff where, you know, if you write a paper or you grade a bunch of papers, etc., you don't always have that sense of, aha, I got something done. Although lately... My main job has been watching a toddler, which just keeping a toddler alive does feel like an accomplishment, I gotta say. Ah, I'm also a big D&D &D fan. I still uh, have been playing in a game over quarantine on Zoom. We're playing sort of a homebrew, you know, Redwall, where you have sort of mice and rats as the main characters. We're doing kind of a homemade version of that, except it's much more grim. Um, which is fun, but boy, I do miss a good, just plain old dungeon crawl, I have to say. <laughs> Toddlers are definitely cryptids, yes. Uh, they're inscrutable, and they're unexplainable. They often produce lots of uh, slime in ways and places you'd never expect. You're right, there's a lot about toddlers that, that really scream that they're cryptids. <laughs> yeah, they definitely require offerings. And they will let you know if you have not offered enough. It's amazing how bad my aim is using a mouse and keyboard in this, because I've been using uh, the Switch so long. And the first time I played Stardew Valley, I played it on the PC. And when I switched to the Switch, I found that awkward. But now, I've, you know, played another 100 hours or whatever on the Switch, so these controls seem strange. I keep thinking about getting um, a playlist of Stardew Valley music to just listen to when I'm taking walks or grocery shopping. Give me that little uh, serotonin burst I get from just walking around in this world. All right. I often obsess 
about clearing out the farm, but it's 2.30. I've done a lot of good, good farm work. I think I should go take a look around. I'm gonna drop off some of this, some of these natural resources first though. for a lovely long walk earlier today. I live next to a cemetery slash arboretum, which is a very nice place to walk. I just have to go down my short street and around the fence, and there I am. I'm gonna go to the beach. Sometimes I've mentioned to people that I live next to a cemetery, and. I've asked, I've been asked questions if that's in any way creepy. Um, it's not. I mean, I can imagine how somebody would think that it is. But my interaction with the cemetery is it's a big, open, wild feeling place um, that I can see from my back porch. The local high school track team practices in it runs a big circular road. And then mostly what I see there is humanity being more or less sweet and adorable. Sometimes sad, but often what I see are people visiting graves and planting flowers or, or decorating for seasons. A lot of people have placed little LED lights all around the cemetery. So at night from my back porch, I see all these sort of ghostly lights of different colors out in the dark. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's never struck me as creepy. It's like a bunch of little stone love letters. Yeah, DM, I, I really haven't ever thought about listening to video game music while doing other things, but it is kind of perfect. Hi, Willie. Welcome back. Yes, I will sell you smelly fish. Sometimes Willie makes me feel kind of guilty because I don't usually start my Stardew Valley experience with a bunch of fishing. And, you know, he posts all of these ads for, boy, I sure would like to get people more interested in fishing around here. Sure would be nice if somebody else shared my passion. And then in this new patch, he, of course, has his back room. 300. You can probably come up with that. His back room that he unlocks if you're into fishing enough. The point I'm trying to make here is Willie seems lonely. <laughs> Poor Willie. Random house, hello. Anybody home? I'm never going to get that meet everybody achievement. Forging ahead, yes. Getting started. I planted my parsnips, okay? Introductions, 8 of 28. Maybe I'll loiter around town a little bit more. See who else is about. Poor Willie, I know. Oh, you! I want to meet you people. Hi, Benny. You're shy, that's okay. I guess it's early in this run, but boy, it's already time to start thinking about who I might marry, I suppose. One of the things that I find, <laughs> this is a real good sign for Stardew Valley's writing, is I think that's a, I always think that's a real hard choice. Like, okay, Penny, all right, I love books. Uh, Leia, all right, nature and art, okay, yeah, that's wonderful. Abby's a weirdo, which, you know, appeals to me. Everybody's great. Over here yet? 
don't know. I don't know. Maybe in this new patch there are more options. Maybe I can marry the uh, witch or something. All right. Fine. Six thirty. Early to bed. Early to rise. I haven't opened the mine yet, right? I get a letter about that, don't I? It's Linus. A stranger. Hello. Let's not be strangers. Let's meet one another. I don't mind you. Just want to, like, hang out with you for a bit. You seem of a lot of people here to really have it all figured out. Okay, good night. Good talk. <laughs> I want to know the secret of Linus's leaf shirt, which I find very impressive. Did he make that? If I remember correctly, Linus is friends with the wizard. So, hard to know what arcane knowledge he might possess lets him make awesome leaf shirts like that. Weeding into the darkness. It's getting dark, but still I weed. I have to tell you, I have an ongoing Stardew Valley game on, on the Switch where you know, all my tools are iridium and uh, my energy. I think I've reached the maximum amount. So this feels weird to be so bad at this. But again, for me, Stardew Valley is not about rushing the uh, progression here. It's about enjoying spending time in this lovely community. <laughs> Wait, so you think the leaves are glued directly to his body? That might explain why you never see him change. Changing is no longer an option. Maybe they're stitched onto his... Maybe that's his skin. Maybe he's... Maybe Linus is a cryptid. Maybe Linus is a cryptid and that's his natural camouflage. That's true. Changing does require energy. I'm going to a... Kung Fu movie watching gathering this evening and we're good social distancing folks so we're sitting outside around a bonfire with a tv looking at a tv on someone's back porch uh so i had to like uh you know take a shower and put on real clothes and prepare to go see other people which is not something i've done a lot of this year I guess what I'm saying is I'm a little jealous of Linus and his eternal leaf clothes. No, Mr. Crow. That crow's always there. Almost as if to remind me to be grateful for my scarecrows later. Wow, Pierre going hard with the advertising. Like, he can't have more than 28 customers. That's everybody who lives around here. And so he's just going to send us individual letters. Dear Jared, your backpack in particular looks too small. You know I sell those, right? Come on, man. Where am I at on... Oh, not much.
much of anything yet. Oh yeah, it's like day three, right. All right, let's see if I can get some forging. I think I'm gonna focus on forging, especially since it's a rainy day, so I didn't have to use up a whole bunch of my energy on watering crops. I'll do forging and wood gathering. Because it seems like building that bridge over on the beach is a uh, nice way to get some early game income. Thanks, DM. Nice to have you on here. surprised how uh, well this is working. I have what is essentially a hundred dollar laptop I bought to run Microsoft Word. And it seems to work fine on Twitch. And having my cell phone propped up against a stack of books is working okay for letting me look at chat. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're thinking about streaming and wondering if it's too hard, the answer is no. I have a really sort of hilariously haphazard setup going here. And I think it works just fine. Of course, it doesn't take a whole lot of computing power to play Stardew Valley. Which is just fine. Chopping wood in the rain. I can imagine somebody talking about chopping wood in the rain to make it sound like a really grueling sort of work day and project. And yet, as my little pixel man runs around and chops wood in the rain, I can't help but think, oh man, I would love to chop wood in the rain. A warm spring rain out there gathering wood. Ugh. Ugh, why does that sound so appealing? Oh, the exhaustion. All right, if I try to clear that stump, the game will punish me with a very slow walk back home. So we will leave that for next time. See if I can gather some wild seeds and find some forageables. Ugh, I love the sound of the rain in this game. Boy, there's something really magical about any time you're out in the rain and it's sort of a warm, appealing rain and you have that moment of realization that there's no place you'd rather be, that rain isn't a thing you need to escape. What a wonderful sensation that is. Sort of a biological draw to what rain is. I suppose dating back to the origin of our species, rain is a good thing. All right, some delicious spring onions. I think those are ramps, actually. 
Maybe spring onion is another way to say ramps. In my part of the world, where I live in central Ohio, there are wild onions that we tend to refer to as ramps around here. There's even a ramp festival where they find all sorts of interesting ways to cook things with ramps. I don't typically love an oniony flavor, but I have been known to eat ramps straight out of the ground because there is something that, I don't know, always feels really special to me about eating sort of wild foraged foods like that. Listen to me, I sound like Leia. Leia? L-E-A-H. I'm just realizing, since I am now playing this with a microphone, that I'm not sure how I pronounce her name. When are they going to release the fully voiced version of Stardew Valley? <laughs> I don't know that I would want that. So Stardew Valley is an immensely popular game. Do you guys think that this is going to be one of those where, since it's such a smash hit, they're going to that the creator will someday uh, sell the rights or work with a bigger team and we'll have like a state-of-the-art, fully voiced Stardew Valley sequel with amazing graphics. I don't know. One of, one of the wonderful things about Stardew Valley, part of the magic of it, is I don't think it needs that. Not just I don't think it needs it, I don't think that would have any particular impact on the experience. I mean, the sound of rain in this game, the sort of, the graphics, the pixel suggestion of rain, it has a lot more to do with invoking the idea of rain in you than it does with some sort of photorealism, right? Um, yeah, I, I have a strange obsession with destroying all of the weeds. I don't know. Well, I guess I do know I'm out of uh, energy, and this is one of the few cleaning up my farm things I can do that takes no energy at all. funny, my 100-plus um, hour game, whatever it is that I'm playing on Switch, there's no doubt that that character with his tools could clear the entire farm in a day. And yet again, it is one of those moments to remind myself that that is not the point. I think the point of Stardew Valley is the meditative action itself. Although I, I occasionally like to watch speedruns, and I think for fun I, I searched Stardew Valley speedrun on YouTube. And there were a number of uh, categories people were working on. And I'd watch that too. I guess the point is, there isn't a wrong way to play Stardew Valley. Not in my opinion. Hi, Linus. Well, I'm not asking you to trust me, buddy. I just wanted to chat with a fellow enjoyer of the rain. No? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I know that you love cactus fruit and coconuts, and I'm going to win you over. I wonder if I've gathered enough to uh, prove my forging. 
Here's a question I suppose we're not meant to think about. I know the map of Stardew Valley pretty well. How did that guy get on that side of the boulder? Did he swim? This is a game with actual monsters, so... I'm probably not supposed to be thinking about that, huh? Looking at my uh, haphazard setup here again, I will say that I do have a ring light. That is what is currently lighting me because uh, my partner is interested in doing uh, makeup tutorials. So I have this desk that is a jumble of books and half finished poetry and stacks of things. Uh, <laughs> but I do have a semi fancy uh, ring light. incongruously uh, stuck here amongst my jumble. And that's why I look flawless. What a nice rainy day. Went for a walk in the forest. Did some weeding on the farm. Gathered, gathered some nutritious wild edibles, making them available to my community. Now the sun is setting. There's no light pollution. I bet I can see the curve of galaxies in the sky. Beautiful. Another good day here in Stardew Valley. All right, friends. I have some other nice things that I'm doing today. There it is. Hey, I got my first level of foraging. Wonderful. Those field snacks are very important. All right. Look at that little cottage tucked among the hills. All right, my friends. Thank you for spending some time with me. I enjoy doing this. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. I will return. I'm going to post a schedule here soon. I'm still sort of debating what would be the most reasonable schedule for me to keep. At the moment, the truth is I just enjoy playing Stardew Valley, and when I sit down at my computer to do it, I have trouble thinking of any reason why I shouldn't turn on the streaming. I enjoy chatting with you. I enjoy sort of talking to myself. Well, I'm leaning toward eight or nine at night, maybe two or three days a week. We'll see. If you have thoughts, do let me know. All right. I will see you later.